Hi everyone, my name is Ben Grist and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be teaming up with Zealous Ministries again to discuss the question, what is paradise? Near the end of Luke chapter 23, we come across this dialogue between Jesus and the two criminals who have been crucified alongside him. From verse 39, one of the criminals calls out to him, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Whilst he was on the cross, one of the criminals crucified alongside Jesus made this massive statement of faith, declaring, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And in response, Jesus assures him of his salvation when he says, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So what is this paradise that Jesus speaks of? Apart from the time that he speaks to the criminal, there are two other times that this word paradise appears in the New Testament. First up is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where the Apostle Paul describes this journey of a man, most probably himself, caught up to the third heaven in verse 2. And then later on he identifies this third heaven as paradise in verse 4. And then also in Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, we see that the tree of life is in the paradise of God. Later on in Revelation 22 2, we find that the tree of life is in the New Jerusalem. Therefore paradise is in the New Jerusalem. However, according to Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 and 2, we see that the New Jerusalem will only be revealed after the end times. So how is it that people like the Apostle John was able to see it before this time? Well, in verse 10, John says that an angel carried him away in spirit to show him this new Jerusalem. And potentially this was the same way that the man Paul mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 was able to see the new Jerusalem before the end times or before his death. In Luke chapter 23 verse 43, Jesus says to the righteous criminal that he would be with him in paradise after they both died. And as we've already seen in Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, that paradise is a reward in the afterlife for the righteous. And there are plenty of other New Testament passages to suggest that actually when we die, that we're with Jesus. And that's why at the very end of Revelation, the New Jerusalem, in other words, paradise, is referred to as God being with man. In Revelation chapter 21, verse two to three, as I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. So we've seen that paradise is the New Jerusalem, which will be realized after the end times, where the righteous will be with Jesus forever. But what actually is paradise? What does it mean? The Greek word for paradise in the New Testament is this word paradisos, which comes from the Hebrew word meaning garden or park. And the Hebrew word was actually borrowed from the word pardes, which occurs three times in the Hebrew Bible. First, in Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse five, I made myself gardens and parks, pardes, and planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. Song of Songs chapter four, verse 13, your shoots are an orchard, pardes, of pomegranates, with all choicest fruits, henna and nard. And then Nehemiah chapter two, verse seven and eight. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, pardes, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple. So where did Jesus and the early Christians get this concept of paradise being about the afterlife for the righteous? Many Christians think that paradise isn't mentioned at all in the Old Testament, but in fact, it's where it all began. The first thing we need to realize is that the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Hebrew Bible, was in fact the main Bible for the Jews and the early Christians. And thus, their religious language was influenced and shaped by this Septuagint. We also need to remember that the Greek word for paradise in the New Testament was this word paradisos. Well, if we look back into the Old Testament, we see this word paradisos in the Septuagint appear right at the beginning of the Old Testament, all the way back in Genesis chapter two. And the Lord God planted a garden, paradisos, in Edom at the east, and put there the man whom he molded. And God caused to spring out from the earth every tree, beautiful for seeing and good for eating. And the tree of life in the midst of the garden, paradisos, 
and the tree of knowing of good and evil. But a river goes out from Edom to water the garden, Paradisos, from there it's separated into four beginnings. As English speaking Christians, we are so used to reading and talking about this phrase, the Garden of Eden, because that's what appears in our English Bibles. But what would the first Christians have called this garden in their Greek native language? Well, they would have called it according to what they would read in their Greek Bibles in the Septuagint. Simply put, ho paradisos, literally the paradise. What we actually see is that the Garden of Eden never actually appears at all in the Septuagint. Also notice the definite article, ho paradisos, literally the paradise, referring to one specific paradise. So when the first Christians heard Jesus and Paul and John talking about ho paradisos, the paradise, which paradise do you think came to their minds? That's right, it's the paradise from Genesis chapter 2 and 3, the paradise that we call the Garden of Eden. Notice how in Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, in the Septuagint says that God planted the tree of life in the midst of the garden. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, we find that the tree of life is in the paradise of God. Later on in chapter 22 verse 2, we find that the tree of life is in the New Jerusalem, which will be realized after the end times. This means that the New Jerusalem is the paradise of God, which is in fact the Garden of Eden from all the way back in Genesis chapter 2 and 3. Thinking back to this story in Genesis, we're reminded how Adam disobeyed God by eating from the tree of good and evil. He lost the right to eat from the tree of life and was thus expelled from the Garden of Eden. And then, because we're in Adam, just like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22, we are likewise disqualified from this tree of life. And then finally, it says in verse 45 that because Jesus came as the final Adam, the last Adam, he is there to restore humankind to what the first Adam lost for them. And so, to all of us who are in Jesus, after the end times, at the coming of the New Jerusalem, we will all be given access into this paradise which Adam was expelled from. And we will be given the right to eat from the tree of life from which Adam had lost. And so just as Jesus said to that criminal on the cross, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So when thinking about that verse, there were lots of different other um, things that come to mind, lots of different topics, especially uh, considering this translation of this word today and all of the different um, understandings and commentaries on it. But that's all we've got time for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.